the way it works is the antenna sends an interrogation signal on, uh, on a frequency and then the airplane responds on a different frequency with all kinds of information. At the uh, very least, the uh, aircraft responds with a four-digit number that has previously been assigned by air traffic control. Um, and uh, this is called mode A. And then there is mode C, which also gives the altitude um, in 100-foot increments back to the, uh, to the controller. And the uh, controller sees on the radar not only that blip where the, ra where the aircraft is located, but also uh, the altitude, if it's mode C equipped, and that number. So that makes it easy for a controller when you check in with him and there's lots of traffic in the area and he assigns you a number, you put this number in your transponder and he sees it on the radar, then there's certainty that that really is you. Uh, so, like I said, the, uh, the radar antenna sends a signal, an interrogation signal into into the air and um, there's two different modes well there's a lot more modes but we're gonna only focus on A and C there's mode S which gives an aircraft identification number and a lot more info and then there's various military modes uh, that uh, are for identification friend or foe so where the aircraft identifies itself and uh, you know it's a friendly aircraft but we're just gonna look at mode A and mode C today so this is a signal or rather this is the pulse shape of the signal that is sent for the interrogation types. It is sent on 1030 megahertz and uh, this P2 here is very important for something we're gonna get at in a second but uh, for the transponder to determine whether it responds with that four digit number in mode A or with its altitude in mode C only depends on the uh, distance from uh, poles 1 to poles 3. So if the uh, radar wants to interrogate uh, that four digit number, it'll send uh, pulses spaced at 8 microseconds. And if it wants the altitude, it'll do it at uh, 21 microseconds. And in reality, it does those uh, sometimes alternating, sometimes it does AAC, AAC, something like that. Really depends on the exact radar. So uh, what's P2 and why is it so small? Well, P2 is for side lobe uh, suppression. So you can imagine a radar antenna is uh, somewhat focused, but uh, not as narrow as it should be. So uh, the way we get around it is there's side lobe antennas, as the name implies, on the side of the antenna, which transmit this pulse P2 at the same amplitude as the main antenna transmits P1. Now, in an ideal scenario, when the radar antenna points directly at the aircraft, P1 will be stronger than the side lobes. So, and as long as that is true, the transponder will respond. Now, if the aircraft gets to the edges of that antenna beam, it will receive P2 stronger than P1, and in that case, it'll, it'll elect not to respond. So, this is one of the many ways of the side lobe suppression that are, that are uh, utilized here. All right, so now this is something that you can uh, quite easily generate if you have a, uh, a signal generator that goes up all the way to a little over one gigahertz, you know, generating this pulse shape, especially since you only need P1, P3, is fairly easy. So we're not really going to get into that one. But what's more interesting is how the aircraft responds. So like I said, it's a four digit number and this four digit number is encoded. Um, I should mention it's octal. There's only eight possible values, zero to seven. And as such, the highest value that we need for seven is 111 uh, binary. So uh, we're encoding this. There's always this F1, there's always F2. That's, you know, kind of your, your mar edges, making sure that you have the beginning and the end framed in. Then uh, the middle one is, is missing completely. It's drawn in here so little for the timing. By the way, I gotta get, give credit here to, uh, uh, I wish the name of the website would be on here. Let's see if it's on the other one. Yes, uh, airportcorp.com. They have a nice article on secondary surveillance radar on their website, and this is where I took these, these pictures from. They are very nice, and uh, I will link them down below. So if you wanna read up some more about the details, you can do that there. All right, so you see they have them a little bit scrambled up here. They are not in order, and um, that's okay. The way they are encoded, it shows that it down here for A. So, you know, if your transponder code would be 7, then A1, A2, and A4 would be present. So A1, A2, A4 would be there. 
and a zero would mean that that pulse is missing. So if uh, your number would be zero, or would be leading with a zero for A, then this one, that one, and that one would be missing. And the same principle applies, of course, for uh, B, C, and D to uh, encode all the other numbers. Then something that's not pictured here, there's another pulse that's a little bit further out about here, which um, is called the ident uh, pulse. If, if, it, if it is present, then the radar controller sees a little, uh, you know, it, sometimes it blinks, sometimes it highlights, it sees something on the screen. And that's useful when, uh, when the controller is not on top of all of his numbers and wants to be certain that you are you, he will tell you to ident and uh, you, you push the ident button on the transponder and then, like I said, it'll in the next uh, mode A interrogation, it'll have this extra pulse present, which will tell the radar to uh, mark you in some way or another on the radar screen. All right, so now I thought let's have a little look at how we can, you, you know, make something out of this and, and involve some test equipment. Um, ADS-B and uh, this right here uh, is as closely related. You know, ADS-B out is mode S, which I've talked about, where the aircraft actually identifies itself as an aircraft serial number. It gives you the name of the aircraft, you know, all those nice things. Uh, it gets a lot more complicated for that. But anyway, there's a lot of enthusiasts which uh, use software like RTL 1090, for instance, and these uh, software dongles uh, such as this. Um, to receive these airplane packages, the ADS-B out messages, and uh, then map them on a uh, you know radar screen. And I thought, why don't we generate a signal for transponder code 777 and see if RTL 1090 correctly decodes that as a uh, mode C transponder signal. So the first thing we need, of course, is we need a pattern. We need a pattern for transponder code 777. And uh, I'm using the Tektronix AFG 3102 here. And I will show you how I set this up. Obviously, this is an arbitrary waveform. And as you can see, this USB stick contains uh, both the interrogation pulses, but it also has Squawk 1200 and 777 in here. Squawk, I haven't mentioned that yet. That's, that's the name of that code, because it squawks like a seagull. Um, so we're going to select our 777. By the way, great thanks to Alan Wolke, W2AEW. He made those arbitrary waveforms for me because I wasn't that familiar with uh, how to generate them yet at that time. So um, what you see here is you see our, our pulses. You see the missing pulse in the middle. And you see that ident pulse because this signal contains the ident uh, pulse frame in there. All right, so let's get started with that. Let's enable this, and let's have a look at the scope. And that looks a lot like, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. Yeah, like that. This is exactly what we want. I'm sorry, I can't frame this much better. Well, if I zoom out, maybe. There we go. So. This looks definitely a lot like the way we want it to look. You see that extra uh, pulse there to the right? That's, like I said, the ident pulse. So now we got to turn that into a uh, RF pulse signal. So let's switch over here to the uh, TSG. So I got the, uh, the output of the, uh, of the AFG going into the back of the analog modulation input of the TSG. 4106. Frequency is set to uh, 1090 megahertz. That is the frequency those transponders respond on. Then our modulation is set up as modulation type pulse. Source is external. And uh, hang on, I missed something. Width, that's where I wanted to look at. The pulse width is 450 nanoseconds. We got that set right here. Uh, source, external, everything is the way we want it to. So if I enable this now, and I have the output going into the RF input of the uh, Tektronix MDO 4000 here. So if I enable this, we see our RF down here. And in case you're wondering what exactly we're looking at there, um, I used one of the RF traces. So if I RF versus time, 
This is the amplitude trace. This is what we're seeing down here. So the signal is going into the RF input and not into the uh, into the a normal input, and this is uh, it performs an FFT on it and integrates uh, the power over a selected bandwidth, and this is exactly what we're seeing here. So yet again, what we see right here is what we expect our 77 plus ident to look like. This is the RF shape that we're seeing here. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that is plugging it into RTL 1090 and seeing what comes out of it. All right, I got RTL 1090 open and running. It is in mode AC. So uh, if I hit the RF enable on the uh, TSG 4104 now, there we go. 777 is the transponder code that we were expecting. So yeah, that was a quick intro into secondary surveillance radar and uh, I, uh, brief view on how you could possibly test the transponder at home. And uh, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And the, uh, the files for the transponder code 777 and 1200, both with the ident poles, I will offer them for download on my website. And if you need anything more specific, just let me know.